Hey everyone, my name is Hydrizny or Blosh1 and I got 25 million XP in 25 days and I'm going to help you get to 152 faster. The first thing you're going to need to do is find out how much experience you have remaining, then you divide it by the amount of months remaining, so we're going to use 6 as an example for this, and that means that we need to get that much experience every single month. You divide that by 4.33 recurring, and what that's going to give you is how much experience you need to get a week. Then we divide that by 7, and it's going to show us how much experience we need to aim for every single day. The last thing that I recommend you do is divide that daily amount by 60,000, because that's the most you're going to likely get in an hour, and the number you get is how many hours you're going to play. So if you've worked out that number and uh, you think it's something that's achievable, I just thought I'd quickly put it on screen. These are the things that you can look forward to as a reward for grinding to 152. I, want, I encourage you to watch this back a few times. If that's something that you think it's worth grinding for, then definitely I'm going to help break it down as fast as possible for you. But if you're not super passionately you know, dedicated to wanting 152 and you're under 150, then I would encourage you to just play Halo casually, keep enjoying it, get involved with the awesome updates that they keep putting into the MCC seasons. Uh, that's going to be a lot better way to enjoy Halo going into Halo Infinite instead of grinding out Mythic Warzone 5 fight for hours a day. Um, if though you saw that and you're like, holy dooly, I need to get my hands on those armors uh, and those coatings, then uh, this video is going to help you get there a little bit faster and I hope you guys can manage to enjoy the grind uh, a little bit more than if you had just been winging it. Before we get going on the juicy stuff, I just wanted to quickly say that I've left a link in the description of this video to all of the 152 videos that I watched on my way through, uh, because if you think you need a little bit more detail, you might find it in there. I'm going to try and keep it as succinct as possible for you, so you can watch this, you can get to grinding, you can share it with your friends, and you can make sure that you know you're doing the things that are going to get you there the fastest. Uh, one that I'd recommend watching is uh, Crazy Miller's video, where he breaks down the experience and the amount of time needed in a lot more depth than what I did at the start of this video. He's also got a really helpful sheet in there if you want to break down the experience that you need uh, and how much time it's going to take you. Alright, let's quickly cover the boosts. So, the most effective thing that you can use is a Gambit AI boost. Uh, you can only get those randomly, you can't purchase them or anything like that. So if you've got them, you may as well use them to your grind. You'll be able to get about 35k max. Uh, I was kind of averaging about that 33k range um, while using these boosts. So that's the first thing. Second one is legendary XP boosts. You get about 11,250, something like that experience every single game for using a legendary XP boost boost. I'm going to put a link in the description so that you can go and buy them if you want. Uh, if it's something that you're trying to do, guys, it's going to make it so much faster if you can afford to use them. If not, the grind is going to take you that little bit longer to do, um, but hopefully that link will help a few people out. First tip that I've got for you guys is there are double XP playlists that come into Warzone, okay? The Warzone Turbo, in my opinion, isn't worth playing. It'll chew through your wrecks, and unless you really, really enjoy Warzone Turbo, I wouldn't suggest playing it. Warzone Assault, on the other hand, you can see me playing it in the background here. It's a really quick game mode. So if you're playing with a team, you can actually beat some of these rounds, like total game, in under three minutes. I think my fastest was about two minutes 54, playing with a full team. Uh, with the Legend XP boosts on that means that you're getting around 15 to 18 K a game in three minutes now that's the fastest that I was able to find the entire way playing to, for the whole month uh, and uh, I made use of it for a whole weekend and, and it took a chunk off it actually let me have a day off a little bit later because I got uh, about 1.5 mil in one day um, so I'd recommend playing Warzone Assault and if you enjoy Warzone Turbo, put it in there, but it's going to burn through the wrecks and it's not going to be as beneficial as if you were just playing Mythic Warzone Firefight. So this one's less of a tip and just something that I think you really have to know when you're going for this grind. There are so many things that can get in the way and make it difficult for you. Like, for some reason, the round's not loading properly, where you're waiting for grunts, you're waiting for elites to spawn, and they don't. If you've got your legendary experience boost on, then it's not the end of the world, because you're still going to get that chunk of 11,000 experience at the end of the round. But if you don't, you just stuck for five minutes waiting for a game to finish, and you get like a thousand experience, and then have to start all over again. Uh, another big one is that the uh, actual Halo 5 game might crash. It 
have happened uh, numerous times in my 14 hour grinds uh, and then you've got to get back into the game make sure that you're reloading a custom game to get into it and then starting to search before getting into the game again so just be aware that there are some things that can actually make it difficult to grind to 152 before you even start grinding uh, because that type of stuff although right now you're listening to it and you're like oh it's a bit of a silly thing to say I promise if you're grinding hard and those things happen regularly it could be the difference between you wanting to keep grinding and quit altogether so it's something that I think everybody should be aware of before they actually get into the grind okay this is now going to be probably the best tip that I can give you guys and it's a super simple one splattering and assassinations are by far the fastest way to get through like 70% of the rounds in mythic warzone firefight so in the first round if you really focus on getting a bunch of kills you can actually get three wrecks in that first round you can use it to either summon a, a random vehicle we have a chase of getting something like a mantis a wraith or you know a wasp to go flying around the map um, but more than regularly you're going to get a ghost uh, or you can just straight up go for the ghost spawn with your three wrecks that's going to help you to clear that second third and fourth round really really quickly if it's a kill targets just go through and run them through uh, if it's something like where you're going to kill a knight you can be a huge distraction so the rest of your team that can kill or you can put on a, a decent amount of damage as well make sure that if you're going into playing solo and you're playing really well if there's someone above you on the leaderboard don't be afraid to send them a message and say hey do you want to party up the more people you've got that are trying to get the objective cleared as fast as possible, the more fun and easy it's going to be for you to get to 152. I was so bad at the beginning of this, just trying to do it myself, and I was struggling. There were round after rounds that we weren't winning, and I was probably only winning like 20 or 30% of the games that I played. I was missing out on an extra 5,000 experience, getting 20,000 experience in a game, when I could have, in the same time, gotten an extra 5,000 experience, right? so. If you are playing well, people see that you're calling in Rex, see that you're playing really effectively, then make sure that you're inviting them, sending messages. You'd be surprised how amazing it is when you get eight players all not afraid to call in Rex playing together. It's going to make a really big difference to smashing out a whole lot of experience as fast as possible. If a round goes past really quickly, watch what your teammates are doing or did in that round and you're going to learn something on how to beat a round a lot quicker. Uh, for example, using a plasma pistol to take out this grunt mech's shield, you can then one shot it in the head with a BR, something that I learned from my friend Bowen when we were playing together and it takes a huge amount of time out of these rounds. A lot of these rounds get people stuck as well and they go for the entire time limit and end up losing when you can actually beat it in like 10 seconds if you've got more than one person shooting a plasma round at it. Uh, there's a few other things that you can do, like if you've got a Banshee round, then use lasers and rail guns and you can get them down in literally like no time at all. The other one is using the binary rifles at the bottom of the, the Phaetons, uh, then you can actually get through those Phaeton rounds. Okay, speed round for you now guys. If you don't have a lot of wrecks and you can't call things in, that's completely fine. There are some really effective weapons that you can pick up off the ground. Plasma pistols and suppressors are really, really good at taking down shields and doing damage to enemies and it'll help your teammate. So don't be afraid to pick up those. The splinter turret can cause a lot of damage and can get you through some of the early rounds really quickly. So don't be afraid to pick up weapons. If a teammate has died and you're in the last two rounds, there's a very good chance they're not going to be able to make it back to their weapon. So if you see a weapon that they've clearly called in, don't be afraid to pick it up and use it. It's better for you to be able to put the damage on while that teammate's dead for the next 30 seconds than for it to go to waste. Defending the garage is a round that I see a lot of people struggle with and there's two tips that I've got for you here. If you want to be person, a person that's taking out the enemies in there, then splattering them is a really effective way to go. The second thing is, if you can jump onto one of the staircases on either side and stay completely still, uh, and just slightly moving so that you don't get booted from the game, the timer won't go down. Time after time, I was so disappointed we were losing a round because no one was getting inside the defend objectives and the timer would count down and we'd lose. If you can get inside of the bases that have the defend objective around them, the timer won't go down. If you're standing outside and trying to fight the enemies in and wondering why you keep losing the round, that's why. Get inside, the staircases on either side of those bases are gonna keep you alive and you're gonna be able to win the round even just by timing it out. 
And that's pretty much everything that I wanted to share with you guys. I hope there's some tips in there that helps you get to 152 a little bit faster. If you've got some questions for me and or you just wanted to chat to someone, then uh, you can drop a like or a comment on this video with your gamer tags and I'll jump on. I'll help you guys grind to 152 if you need it and uh, maybe be able to even show you and connect you with some other people that are going for 152 as well. Please, if you enjoyed the video, share it with your friends. Uh, make sure that you like and leave a comment. It helps the YouTube algorithm show it to more people. And I worked really hard on getting to 152. Super proud that I got there and can't wait for Halo Infinite. Thanks, guys.